Mark Metcalf for Treasurer. ABC 36 on your side. Watching ABC 36 on your side. Good day, Kentucky. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Good Day, Kentucky. I'm Lee Cruz along with Haley Herman. Happy Thursday, everybody. We are so excited to have you tuning in today here at 9 a.m. Hope your day is off to a good start. And thanks for choosing us to help be a part of it. One of the things we're going to be talking about, uh, everybody's starting to gear up for the uh, 2023 PGA Barbersall Tour that is part of uh, the community now. It's been around for, what, five, six years? Mm -hmm, yeah. Possibility could be the last year. The the sponsorship's running out, but that doesn't necessarily mean the PGA Tour leaves uh, Central Kentucky. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Yeah. But there are all kinds of preparations as they're looking for volunteers because it's a fantastic event. And I think it was last year or the year before, one of the highest rated tournaments that that was not a major that the Golf Channel got to feature. Oh, wow. Because it went into that sudden death with extra holes being yes, played. Yes, yes, And the entire country was watching it. Was it was watching it. was great it. with excitement. So they've had a fantastic event and something that we can all be proud of. Yes, and it's coming up in July once again. We're going to get you geared up for that. And the Lee and Haley Show is a proud sponsor of that event as well. So we, we do a lot of things with their... Caddy 127. Yes, yeah. yes. We're also going to be checking in on your forecast because everybody looking ahead to the Derby. Thurby is today, tomorrow the Kentucky Oaks, so and then of course Saturday the Kentucky Derby. We're going to have uh, live weather from Churchill Downs today. We're also going to have live sports from Churchill Downs today. Jeff Acoro's up there and meteorologist Jordan Smith. Excited oh, to check yeah. in with them in just a little bit as and they are there ahead of this weekend's big race. I've never heard of Thurby. We call it You've Thurby. Heard of Thurby? Well, never... we don't call it that. They call it that. It's one of the there's events the every the Kentucky Thurby. The Kentucky Thurby on Thursday. Yes, Thursday Derby. There's always great events going on um, all week long in Louisville for the Derby, and yeah, Thurby is just part of the fun. All right. By the way, it's also May the fourth, and May the fourth be with you. Yes. I just wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. Also, we're going to find out how the very well-known Kentucky rapper Jack Harlow got recognized in Louisville in your entertainment news. Yeah, we've got all that and more coming up today on Good Day Kentucky. Right now, though, as always, let's get you up to date on your local news. Here's anchor Doug High. Welcome into Good Day Kentucky. I'm Lisa High in for Doug High. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning. We're going to go ahead and send things over to Dylan Godet for a check of that forecast now. Dylan, it's, it's actually going to be quite warm. It started off cold this morning. It was chilly, but it is going to warm up nicely today, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, quite warm, but still warmer than it has been, which yes. is an improvement for sure. And we'll We're take it. Still going to be <laughs> just a little bit below average, but into the upper 60s, feeling uh, very nice, and the sunshine is going to be nice as well. Live look here over Lexington, over the Hamburg area, and our bluegrass pace care sky view. Quiet conditions at the moment. Skies are clear. Along those temperatures, they're already climbed into the low 50s, 51 degrees right now. Temperatures elsewhere, we got 49 in Frankfurt, 46 in the Richmond area, 48. Uh, there as we head to um, Moorhead and Jackson as well. Max HG radar quiet at the moment and we'll stay quiet throughout your day today. Again, today is our go day. Make sure you're going out and enjoying uh, those nice conditions. We'll be reaching the upper 60s right around 70 for a lot of areas today. Now, as you head into tomorrow, forecast is a bit tricky. Uh, we are trending drier, which is some good news, especially if you're heading maybe to uh, Churchill Downs for the Kentucky Oaks. And speaking of that, meteorologist Jordan Smith joins us live from Churchill Downs with more uh, details on that forecast as you head into your Thursday. Jordan. Yeah, Dylan, thank you. It is a beautiful morning here at Churchill Downs in Louisville. We're currently setting at 50 degrees, so just a tad bit of a chill, but I can tell you that's not stopping folks from out here watching the horses get some practice runs in, watching the track get ready. It is a fun day. It is a beautiful day, and we're going to keep it that way throughout the remainder of the day. Temperatures will continue to warm up through the 50s, getting around the upper 50s by the time we head into the lunch hour, and then as the Thurby continues to kick off this afternoon. Temperatures will warm up into the low to mid 60s early afternoon, but by this afternoon, the peak heat of the day, four or five o'clock, low 70s are on the table. So no issues from the weather department here in Churchill Downs for the day, but 
that could change as we head into Kentucky Oaks Day there on our Friday. I'll have much more coming up at the end of the show to break down that forecast that, as Dylan said, it's a little tricky. So we'll try to break that down in greater detail and also show you the big day there on Derby Day on Saturday. Those and more coming up in just a little bit. But for now, reporting at Churchill Downs, meteorologist Jordan Smith for ABC 36 on your side. All right, thank you, Jordan. Well, we begin in Lexington this morning as the Lexington Police Department is investigating a murder that happened on Elm Street. Lexington police say the shooting happened right before 6.30 Wednesday evening on the 400 block of Elm Street. When they arrived, they located a man suffering from a gunshot wound. The victim was then transported to a local hospital but has since died from his injuries. Lexington police also adding that they are questioning another person, but no charges have been filed at this time. The Fayette County Coroner's Office has not yet released the name of the victim. Kentucky State Police in Moorhead is searching for a missing teen from Rowan County. KSP says 13-year-old Mariah Jean Gumber was last seen on East Clack Mountain Road in Rowan County. She was last seen around 9.30 Wednesday morning. Gumber is 5 foot 5 and weighs 145. She uh, was last seen wearing a off-white colored pajamas and shirt set and purple Jordan flip-flops. If you have any information, you are asked to contact Kentucky State Police. And happening today, former UK student who was caught on video calling a student multiple racial slurs is back in court today. Sophia Rosing, who has already been arraigned, is accused of calling Kyla Spring multiple racial slurs and also kicking her. She is also accused of assaulting a police officer. Rosing is charged with six counts of different charges from assault charges to disorderly conduct and public intoxication. Rosing will be in court today for a pretrial and status hearing. The American Civil Liberties Union on Wednesday announced it has filed a lawsuit over one of Kentucky's biggest laws banning gender affirming care for transgender minors. And now we'll have a meeting today over filing the lawsuit in Louisville. ACLU saying in a statement calling the bill an unconstitutional measure and said that it was a political attack against transgender people. The bill of concern is Senate Bill 150, which would ban gender affirming medical care for minors as well as require parental notification on sexually related matters and not require educators to use pronouns that don't match the student's gender on their birth certificate, among other things. SB 150 passed in both the House and Senate. Governor Andy Bashir vetoed the passage, which was then overridden by legislators. Well, now in Kentucky, as in-person absentee voting for the May primary started yesterday, there's a few things you may need to know if you're voting in person but can't do so during early voting or on Election Day. ABC 36's Anna Medina spoke with the Secretary of State and has more on what we can expect for the primary. Today is the first day of what we call in-person absentee voting. Uh, people who want to vote in person, that's how they want to vote, but they can't vote during early voting days or on election day, but they still want to vote in person. The primary election is just around the corner, and for some, voting in person on election day might not be a possibility. If you have requested such a ballot, you can track it online at govoteky.gov. You can see when it went out. You can make sure that it arrived back at your clerk's office and that they counted your vote. That's important information. I want to remind everyone, if you're voting by absentee ballot, make sure that you get that back to us by election day. Don't mail it election day. It'll be too late. One thing to keep in mind is that you may return your ballot by mail or in the ballot drop box in your county's clerk office. All ballots must reach the clerk's office by 6 p.m. on election day to be counted. But if you're not voting absentee... You've got uh, this week and the first of next week to vote in person absentee. You've got three days of expanded no excuse early voting Thursday the 11th through Saturday the 13th. Saturday, that's great for most people. And then of course you got Tuesday election day. Secretary Adams says while this is the election in a four-year cycle that tends to have the lowest turnout, voters shouldn't be discouraged and also wants to clear any misconceptions that may be out there. Allegedly, the early voting is rigged and I get to see the results before anyone else, the clerks do. That's total nonsense. Uh, we do get to see how many votes have been cast. That's relevant information. It helps us put information out to the public and be transparent about how many votes have been cast, how many cast by registered voters of each party. 
that's important information for the campaigns to have, the parties to have, and the electorate to have. It's transparent. But what we do not have access to is how people voted. That was Anna Medina reporting. Adams also encourages people to vote early to avoid long lines. He also wants to remind everyone if you're in line by 6 o'clock on Election Day, you will still be able to vote. And for more on dates, voting information, and polling locations, click on this web story at WTVQ.com. Well, two more horses have died after separate incidents at Churchill Downs, and it has animal rights ad ad advocates speaking out. ABC affiliate WHAS reports the deaths happened at the track during 50 Tuesday events. Officials with Daily Racing Forum uh, says the three-year-old filly, Take Charge Brianna, was euthanized after a catastrophic injury during race five and chasing already collapsed and died after running in race eight. This comes less than a week after derby contender Wild on Ice with, was euthanized following a workout injury. Churchill Downs calling the deaths completely unacceptable, saying in part, quote, we feel a tremendous responsibility to our fans, the participants in our sport, and the entire industry to be a leader in safety and continue to make significant investments to eliminate risk to our athletes. Churchill Downs also says it will continue to take every measure to ensure the safest possible environment for horses on the property. Meantime, the organization Animal Wellness Action has issued a statement about the number of horse deaths ahead of this year's Kentucky Derby. The group is calling the racing industry to make horse welfare a top priority. The president of the organization saying in part, quote, we remain especially concerned about breeding practices that value speed over bodily integrity and about track surfaces that may be putting the animals and the jockeys at risk of life and limb. PETA also issuing a statement about the horse deaths. The senior vice president saying, quote, the biggest horse race of the year is now preceded by a body count. Three deaths at Churchill Downs in, a, in the week before the Kentucky Derby means injured, sore, or sick horses are being forced to race. The track should close down immediately to put safety protocols in place, including reviewing all veterinary records and medications, observing workouts, and installing standing CT imaging equipment to detect injuries. Dirt and turf tracks should be replaced with synthetic surfaces, which statistics have long shown to be the safest. Horses should not be dying for human entertainment, end quote. In Atlanta this morning, authorities say they have caught the suspected mass shooter accused of killing one woman and injuring four others. The suspect had been on the run for hours after allegedly opening fire inside a medical center before his arrest late Wednesday. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest in our nation view. This morning, the mayor of Atlanta vowing that the now captured mass shooting suspect will face justice. He will be charged and stand trial for his crimes. 24-year-old Dion Patterson accused of opening fire inside a medical center waiting room just before noon Wednesday. If I have a female shot, she's seriously bleeding, shot the side in the back. 39-year-old CDC employee Amy St. Pierre killed. The CDC releasing a statement saying it saddened by St. Pierre's sudden loss. Four other women, ranging in age from 25 to 71, all rushed into emergency treatment for gunshot wounds. He spent about uh, maybe two minutes inside the uh, building uh, where he then exited on foot. Police then saying its camera network tracked Patterson to a gas station, spotting him stealing a pickup truck left running. Very shortly, we were joined by the GBI, the FBI, the Secret Service, as well as United States Marshal Service as we sought to bring this person into custody. A multi-agency pursuit. Law enforcement trailing Patterson outside Atlanta where he surrendered. In Washington, a Georgia senator demanding gun safety reform. We behave as if this is normal. It is not normal. The suspect's mother telling the Associated Press her son was a former Coast Guardsman who was suffering with mental instability from a new medication. She says the Veterans Affairs Health System denied Patterson the Ativan he wanted for his anxiety and depression. 
The Coast Guard confirms Patterson joined the service in 2018 and was discharged in January. The Gun Violence Archive reports Atlanta was the site of one of at least two U.S. mass shootings Wednesday. The archive now counts more than 190 mass shootings so far this year. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Well, coming up, Dylan will have a full look at your forecast, plus the folks who are part of the 2023 PGA Tour Barbasol Championship. They're here in the studio to talk about the upcoming event. Keep it here. Hey everybody, I'm Sherelle Roberts, host of Let's Talk Kentucky. Tune in today after high noon. We have a special guest, Martina Barksdale. You do not want to miss it. The thought of getting screened for colon cancer made me queasy. But now I found a way that's right for me. Feels more easy. My doc and I agreed. I picked the time. Today's a good day. I screened with Cola Guard and did it my way. Cologuard is a one-of-a-kind way to screen for colon cancer that's effective and non-invasive. It's for people 45 plus at average risk, not high risk. False positive and negative results may occur. Ask your provider for Cologuard. I did it my way. So, how was Pigeon Forge? Oh, uh, it was... It was, it was all right. You should see the photos. Okay, well, I'll see y'all later. Bye. Undeniable family fun. Plan your trip at MyPigeonForge.com. Secondhand smoke caused me to have asthma attacks, infections, and lung damage, and I never smoked. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. They tried to intimidate me and my family. I stood strong then, and I won't back down now. That's why over 100 law enforcement leaders have endorsed my campaign, and I'm President Trump's candidate too. I support tough prosecution, tough sentencing, and tough enforcement. Kentucky law enforcement knows I have their back, and they have mine. I'm Daniel Cameron. We need a governor who backs the blue, and that's exactly the kind of governor I'll be. Welcome back, meteorologist Dylan Day here with a live look in Richmond on our bluegrass pay scare sky view. Fantastic conditions out there. Again, it was cold this morning, but we're already starting to warm on up. We warmer, we're warmer than we were this time yesterday, so that is some good news. As those temperatures climb, skies will be staying mostly sunny today as well. 50 degrees at the moment. The, another piece of good news, the winds are calm finally after a breezy last several days across the region. Our warm spot at the moment is Lexington sitting at 51 degrees. 46 in Somerset, 45 still in the London Corbin area. So still some chilly temperatures, especially as you head towards, say, southern Kentucky, where we're a couple degrees colder than we were this time yesterday. Here locally, though, we're a couple degrees warmer, and we will take it, that's for sure. Yes, uh, Monday's high temperature is only 56 degrees, so we've been stuck in this colder pattern, but that comes to an end today. We'll just be a couple degrees below average. All thanks to this upper level low, finally moving off the east coast. It was along the Great Lakes from Saturday through yesterday, and then during the afternoon hours yesterday, it finally started to move towards the east. This uh, ridge of high pressure, um, this ridge towards the center of the United States, will be moving eastward. That'll increase our temperatures and also increase some humidity as you head into next week as well. Uh, you may have heard West Virginia had significant snow in the mountains up boards of 16 inches of snow, which shattered the previous May record, uh, which was... Uh, into their uh, around six to eight inch range. So definitely um, some impressive snowfall totals for this time of the year. And it's the same system that brought us the colder temperatures here locally. Futurecast does bring us a few clouds this afternoon, but it should still be feeling pretty nice out there. Upper 60s for everyone. Tomorrow morning, pretty quiet start to the day. We should be dry for your morning hours. And then as you head into the afternoon, that's where things start to get a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and go ahead and zoom right in on Louisville. So this is a look at the Kentucky Oaks forecast. Post time, a little later into the day, 551. And uh, this is what future cash radar looks like. Very fine line between some rain just south of Louisville and just to the north of Louisville. We are dry. So 
right in the mix in terms of seeing some rainfall. I will say looking drier now than what it has the last couple of days. So that is uh, some good news for you if you are heading to Churchill Downs tomorrow. I'd bring some rain gear just in case. And then as you head into Saturday, could see a few showers, uh, pop up showers very early in the morning. But notice how things clear on out towards the second half of the day. We do have a late post time for the Derby. That is 657. And temperatures should be into the low to mid 70s. Sky should be clearing on out. It should look fantastic there at Churchill Downs on Saturday for the 149th running of the Kentucky Derby. So make sure you, of course, are staying with the ABC 36 Storm Team, though. We'll continue to keep you updated again. A very tricky forecast, especially for Friday. Your temperature outlook as you head into next week, everyone's going to be dealing with above average temperatures. It's not only going to be warmer, but the humidity is going to be on the increase as well. Notice our muggy meter. It's been a while since we've shown this, especially with as cold as what it has been. But notice Saturday into Sunday and Monday, we start to get those dew points into the upper 60s, and that's where it's going to start to feel a little muggy, but that's also going to be leading to some daily rain and uh, storm chances. It's not going to be a washout any of the days, but we could see some rain. 69 degrees of high temperature. Again, it's our go day. Go out and enjoy the nice conditions. Tonight, 45, mostly clear. Not quite as cold as what it has been either. There's a look at that seven day pushing the low 80s next week with those daily rain chances. All right, thank you, Dylan. Well, the Barbasol Championship is one of only 44 PGA Tour events in the world and is played just down the road at Champions at Keene Trace in Nicholasville. The 2023 tournament will take place July 13th through the 16th and attracts some of the best golfers on the planet. And joining us today with all the details of the tournament is Director Darren Nelson and Tournament Services Manager Sarah Gilpin to talk with us and give us more info. Thanks, guys, for coming. First Thanks for thank having you. us. Yeah. Appreciate it. So, okay, so last year was hugely successful. Um, what do you have on tap for this year? We know it's going to be exciting. It is. It's the fifth annual Barbersall Championship, so it's excited to have, you know, some of the best PGA Tour golfers in the entire world right here in our backyard for the fifth annual event. So there's yeah. only 44 of these events in the entire world. Um, and the only one in the state of Kentucky. So we feel very fortunate to have it right here. You know, and I, I have this question, how did we land this? I mean, how are we so lucky to be able to get this tournament here? Well, you need a title sponsor, which we have that in Barbasol, yeah. a great host venue, which we have at Champions at Keene Trace, and uh -huh. then a community who gets behind the event. So we have a lot of sponsors that support the event, and of course mm -hmm. volunteers. So it takes over 800 volunteers to run the event and support it. So it yeah. takes a, an army to really put one of these events together. It really does. And Let's talk about that too, about the volunteers and, and do you still need volunteers too? Yes, we okay. definitely still need volunteers. We are approaching 500 volunteers, so mm -hmm. we're, we're really tracking well right now, but we definitely need still probably about 300 more people just to help everything run efficiently and smoothly and yeah. get everything going and have the volunteers have the best experience as well too. So, so with the volunteers, who are you looking for? What type of skills are you looking for? I mean, do they have to be experienced at golfing in any way, or is it just, you know, is it anyone can come out and help and be a part of it? Yeah, obviously no golf experience necessary. Anyone can come out and help if you are passionate about golf, passionate about being outside, passionate about your community. This would be a great opportunity. There's things you can walk with the players so you can be inside the ropes helping them, um, carrying a score, the sign, mm -hmm. being a standard bear or you could work inside the volunteer headquarters, so inside kind of a little bit more office clerical type yeah, volunteer yeah. work. So there's really something for everyone. Wow, and, and who do they need to contact to be a volunteer? You can go to our website, which is barbasallchampionship.com backslash volunteers, mm -hmm. and then all the information will be on there. Gotcha, yep. and how did you both get involved with this too? Why are you so passionate about this? Uh, for me, I think it was the Tiger Woods effect a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. six months younger than him. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's my answer, and I've been in the business for 20 years. So, yeah. yeah, wow. And Sarah, what about you? I grew up in Florida, big golf state. So I, ended, I was going to golf tournaments pretty much my entire life, and then mm -hmm. now I'm here. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a beautiful course out there, too. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, and uh, what can folks expect that are going to be going to the tournament? What can they expect? this year. Yeah, so we have tickets on sale right now at mm -hmm. barbasallchampionship.com. Uh, we have tickets for everybody. It's a family affair. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you go on the website, we have tickets, um, two complimentary tickets per day for mm -hmm. current military, uh, first responders and veterans and teachers. Great. So we love to do that each and every year. Uh, kids 15 and under get in free, okay. accompanied by an adult. Mm -hmm. Saturday is our family day, so okay. 9 a.m. to noon. We love to have all the families coming out. We'll have all sorts of activities for the kids and the families, face painting, 
UK cheerleaders, bounce houses, all sorts of fun stuff for the kids as well. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, and again, where do folks need to go to find out ticket information or to even volunteer too? It's all on barbasolchampionship.com. All right, guys, thank you so much thank for being you. here thank with you. us. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. And coming up, Sarah will be previewing the Kentucky Derby, plus Jeff Picoro, he is live at Thurby today, and we'll have him up next. Keep it here. People think that fighting like a girl means to give up easily. They haven't met this fighter yet, or any of the female injury lawyers at Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan, the official law firm partner of UFC. Fighting is in our DNA. Angie's List is now Angie, and it's easier than ever to get your projects done right. With Angie, you can connect with top pros and see ratings and reviews. And when you book and pay through Angie, you're covered by our happiness guarantee. Check out Angie.com today. Angie and done. Check that. That's eh, pretty good. Yeah. Not uh -huh. crying, are you? Let's tighten that. And... Ooh. Wait, 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 what was that? Huh? What? That? No, don't worry about that. Here we go. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are, are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Do you have a question? Are you a certified financial planner? Yes. I'm a CFP professional. CFP professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Find your CFP professional at letsmakeaplan.org. Keep going. Keep working. Keep climbing. And always keep playing. With the exceptional orthopedic care at Baptist Health, with a skilled team of dedicated specialists, along with advanced services and procedures, it's no wonder most people choose us to help them keep moving and doing the things that move them. Find a Baptist Health provider today. Sam Sutton sustained multiple fractures to all four extremities. What do you need? At least six surgeons. You've got one more. I might be dying in the next 18 hours, so I'm going to ask, are you single? I got my eye on you. You're watching Good Day Kentucky with Lee Cruz, Haley Harmon, Doug High, meteorologist Dylan Godet, and sports with Sarah Cardona. ABC 36 on your side. Good morning, Kentucky. I'm Sarah Cardona. Yesterday at Churchill Downs, members of the Kentucky House of Representatives were on the backside and talked with owner Mike Rapoli, who happens to own the favorite Forte. Rapoli owns 275 horses, and 240 of them are Kentucky bred. And the question and answer centered on growing the sport, not only in Kentucky, but across the nation. Rapoli says that Kentucky is a model that he hopes other states will copy. Shared revenues between the states could grow horse racing exponentially. Like I said, you guys have such a good model here. It's a shame. How do we duplicate this model nationally and what you guys are doing here? If there could be some shared business model, because it might feel like you're not helping Kentucky, and that's a short-term view. The long-term view is if we grow horse racing, the purses are going to double here, and the people are going to double, and the horses are going to double, and the mares are going to double, and no one's going to complain when you have a bunch of stallions breeding 150, 150, 150 or more. So and for confidence game, the four horse in the Derby, he hasn't run since he won the Rebel Stakes at Oakland Park on February 25th. So that's 10 weeks in between races. But for trainer Keith Desmoro, it's not a problem. He feels his colt is bigger and stronger for the layoff and is ready for a big race on Saturday. Uh, that was an awesome work uh, Saturday. It was an awesome work a couple of weeks ago. And he's training like a bear. Um, the things you don't see, that's what I could elaborate on. His... Uh, his appetite, his coat color, his his uh, his joints are all nice and tight. Um, he's eating well. He seems calm in the barn. You know, when you bring them out to walk in the afternoon and they're nervous and looking around and 
and edgy, that's not a good thing. It's just, it's not good. That's, you want him to be calm and confident uh, going into the race, and he is that way. And today is also Thurvey at Churchill Downs with the gates opening at 11 this morning and post time being at 1245 this afternoon. And to tell us more about the race and events leading up to the Kentucky Derby is ABC 36 Sports Director Jeff Pecoro. Jeff. Well, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, it, this is what we kind of call the, the calm before the storm. The last sets of horses are on the track training right now. Then they'll close the track, their hair it, throw some water on it again, and then get set for today's racing. A big day of racing here, and today is the last day of racing for the fans. You're going to have about 100,000 people here. After today, every seat that you see behind me in the grandstand is uh, it's all inclusive. So all you can eat, all you can drink. So it's a little bit more expensive, but man, it is a great seat. All right, let's talk a little bit about what's happened this morning already. Two scares is two horses through their riders, and one of them was a derby horse, Verifying. Verifying's jockey was down on the dirt for a while. He was able to get back up, and the outriders, sensational outriders here at Churchill Downs, were able to corral Verifying before he was able to get off the track, and that is the big scare. If they can get off the track, because when you're on this backside, there are some roads back here, and you don't want these horses on those roads with the shoes that they wear. Also today, Cyclone Mischief went out. And again, my good friend Dale Romans, uh, he's on the outside looking in. He's the first also eligible, and, it, and it's tough for him. Uh, his daddy, Jerry, was a trainer here. It, Dale grew up here in Louisville. So one horse has to scratch for Mischief to get in, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if that happens. But an absolutely beautiful day. It should be a great day of racing here at Churchill Downs. I'm Jeff Picoro. Live here at Churchill Downs, where ABC 36 Sports on your side. Hi, I'm Dr. Bill Carty, and I lead the team here at Dental Concepts and Implant Center in Lexington. I created this next level dental implant center because I feel that patients are not getting the smiles they deserve in the bluegrass. We're changing lives every single day with dental implants by treating patients that are struggling with their dentures, who can't eat their foods, who can't smile, who can't keep their dentures in place. And we're giving them a more reliable solution with dental implants, giving them permanent teeth. They don't have to worry about sore spots. They don't have to worry about their dentures falling out. They can smile and be at ease. We are in a unique situation in the bluegrass because we are trained especially in dental implants. I don't want to see you go through life miserable and not smiling. That's why our consultations are always free. So pick up the phone. We're a quick phone call away. We'll help you on your new smile journey. You are wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Appreciate Glad to help you. You know what they say, mornings and DQ breakfast go together like biscuits and gravy. Oh, that's right. Two fluffy, freshly baked buttermilk biscuits smothered in warm signature black pepper gravy that's filled with mouth-watering Purnell sausage in every tasty bite. Because you know what they say, a quality morning starts with a quality breakfast. <laughs> They do say all this stuff, right? Well, they will, once they get a taste of our hearty and delicious DQ biscuits and gravy. And it's only a DQ. Happy tastes good. I'm Appliance Pro. We'll help you make your kitchen chef ready. Appliance Pro's inventory blowout sale continues now through the end of the month. This is the perfect time to update your home's kitchen. Come in now for the best selection on top quality GE refrigerators, washers and dryers, ovens, ranges, dishwashers and more. We are locally owned and operated and located at 2320 Fortune Drive in Lexington. The inventory blowout sale till the end of the month. Don't miss it. There is no better gift for your mother on Mother's Day than the gift of relaxation and health. And I am here with Lara. She is the owner of Lexington Salt Cave. Lara, thanks for having us today. Thank you. I appreciate you coming out. Well, it is absolutely gorgeous. We love the Salt Cave here. Tell us a little bit about the Salt Cave itself and what benefits there are for uh, a person's health. 
Sure, so the salt cave is, is constructed of over seven tons of pink Himalayan salt, uh -huh. and it is very grounding and relaxing to the nervous system, so it can really help um, relieve stress and anxiety. So one of the major benefits of halo therapy is respiratory health. Okay. And during your session, we put pharmaceutical dry salt particles into the air. Mm -hmm. It's microscopic, most people don't notice it, mm -hmm. but you are able to breathe a little openly, more clearly, mm -hmm. and the salt works to relieve um, inflammation and swelling, it thins mucus, and it helps clear out the respiratory system. So it's great for things like allergies and asthma. Interesting, so how did you become involved in, in going to salt caves and things like that, finding out about this, and then opening your own business? So I had been to a couple of salt caves um, in the past and then I went through yoga teacher training and I got very interested in holistic wellness and health uh -huh. and right before 2020 hit I just had this idea to really kind of come up and, and maybe open a salt cave right here in Lexington mm -hmm. um, and during the pandemic I spent a lot of time planning and working on business plans and researching and finding out that it was very a very viable business uh -huh. um, as well as bringing something to, to the community that could really help with health and wellness. So that is fantastic. And how do people find out more about the Salt Cave or even make an appointment to come in? So the best way is to go to our website. It's uh, lexsaltcave.com. Mm -hmm. um, they can also give us a call. Um, our phone number is 859-396-2349. Mm -hmm. All right. All of our events are listed on the website. We offer things like yoga, massage, Reiki. We also do um, some special sessions occasionally like workshops, things like that. Mm -hmm. So you can take a look at all that online. Um, you can also come in and pop in for a visit. Um, our sessions are 45 minutes okay. um, and they typically start on the top of the hour. Uh -huh. We're open six days a week. Wonderful. Well, Lara, thank you so much for having us again. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you.